Hello and welcome to the webinar today. This webinar is for applying for your study permit from outside of Canada. My name is Caroline Lawson. I am one of the international student specialists and regulated international student immigration advisors at the University of Alberta. Hi everyone, my name is uh, Xiaobing Lin. I'm also uh, one of the international student specialists and regulated international student immigration advisors at University of Alberta. So uh, today uh, we are going to walk you through on how to apply for a study permit online from outside of Canada. So the first question you may ask yourself is, do I need a study permit? Yes, you must apply for a study permit before coming to Canada. And one of the key documents from uh, the university for your application for study permit is the letter of acceptance. Um, and also uh, you can apply for your study permit online through uh, the IRCC website. And so today our focus will be the online application. You may also have the option to do the paper application for your study permit, but please check with your local VAC office in your home country for paper application. And the next question you may ask yourself is, do I need a representative to help me to do this application? The answer will be no. So uh, for this application, you can totally do it online yourself uh, and also all the information, the forms and on how to do it, you can check uh, Immigration, Refugee and Citizenship Canada website, which is the IRCC website. However, if you decide to use an immigration representative to do the application for you, uh, please be careful whom you ask for advice. So you can check IRCC website on who can represent you and also the tips on choosing an immigration representative. You also can go to ICCRC website to find a certified uh, regulated immigration consultant to do it for you. So what does the application process look like for a study permit application from outside of Canada? There are many steps involved, but we're going to go through all of those steps with you today to give you a good idea um, what to prepare for. So the first step will be to create your IRCC online account. After that, you will start your application where you'll need to complete a questionnaire. That questionnaire will determine the application forms and documents that will be required for your application. At that point, you can prepare all of your application documents to upload to your application account. And once you've done all of those documents and uploaded them all, you can submit your application online and pay your fee. After your application is submitted, you will need to complete biometrics, which is fingerprints and photo, as well as completing a medical if requested. After you've done all of those, then you'll have to wait wait for your approval. Once you have your approval, you can complete the passport submission request and obtain your temporary resident visa. Once you've done that, you can start preparing for your travel and entry to Canada. Okay, thank you, Caroline. Let's start from the first step to create your IRCC account from IRCC website. So when you go to the IRCC uh, official website and scroll down a little bit in the middle, you will see such a page. And on the right, you will see sign in or create an account to apply online. So you click here and then you will see the next page is like this. So uh, today we just focus on the option one to use GC key uh, to sign in your account. So you click sign in with GC key. And after you click that, you will see such a page. So your, for your first time uh, sign in with GC key, you need to create an account, which means that you need to click the button on the right, which says sign up. And after you finish creating your account for your later login, then you need to go to the uh, sign in part. So now, after you uh, click the sign up, you will see the first step, create your username. And then uh, after the username uh, is also the password and then questions and answers. So these are the steps you need to make to complete the first step of your uh, creation. And make sure you follow all the uh, instructions here on how to create your username, your password. 
uh, and also the questions and answers for the security ones. And after you finish all that steps, you will see such a page. And then make sure you complete the, uh, the uh, creation by fitting in your email address uh, and also uh, the other questions and answers here. And then click, I would like to uh, receive the month updates about my application because uh, it is very important uh, to receive the notification from your emails that so that you can know your IRCC account has some updates. Okay, so once you've completed your um, login information and you've created your account, you can start an application. How do you do that? Well, you'll come to this page uh, and you'll have to say, start an application, apply to come to Canada and click on that um, function. Once you've done that, it will bring you to this page. A Little bit confusing, it does say personal reference code you will not have one of those. So you'll need to go down here where it says, I do not have a personal reference code and then determine your eligibility and apply online because that's your next step in this process. And you'll wanna select this top one here, which is for study permit. Once you've done that, you'll get to the questionnaire as I mentioned earlier in the presentation. This questionnaire takes some time to fill in. There's quite a lot of questions, but this is how IRCC determines the application that you're going to be uh, applying for. The first question is, what would you like to do in Canada? Here, you should select study because that is your main purpose for coming to Canada. Second, how long are you planning to stay in Canada? It's important that you fill this question in correctly. And the answer is temporarily more than six months. And then these questions, of course, pertain to your personal situation, which country issued your passport? What is your current country of residence? Um, do you have a family member who is a Canadian citizen or permanent resident and is 18 years or older? Um, and what is your date of birth? Of course, all of that information you can fill in. Another question that we wanna draw your attention to in the questionnaire is, have you visited or lived in any one of the designated countries for six consecutive months in the last year? This question is used by IRCC to determine whether or not you will require an immigration medical exam in order to come to Canada. How do you know if you are in a designated country? Well, there is a little box that you can click in this information button here. And once you're in there, uh, you can select from this um, database here. You can type your country in the, the filter items and see if it shows up here whether or not an immigration medical exam is required. And it will clearly say yes or no. And if it says yes, it will say exactly where you'll need to do that medical exam. Once you have completed your questionnaire, you will receive like an application profile page. On this profile page, you will see there's the application for study permit made outside of Canada form. This is the IMM1294 form. And then you'll have a list of supporting documents that are required of your application. This list here is pretty standard for most countries. Some countries may have some additional requirements, but that will be determined by the questionnaire and where you indicate you are living. So the basic documents here will be the passport, letter of acceptance, proof of means of financial support, digital photo, request for medical if needed, and the family information form. This is another form similar to this IMM 1294 that you'll need to download to your computer and complete. You can see here that the fees are included, $150 Canadian for the study permit, $85 Canadian for the biometrics fee. You pay those fees online at the end of your application after you have uploaded all of your documents and you pay them together all at once. And now uh, let's go through this application form IMM1294. And uh, please keep in mind that you may need to download this form to your computer and then you can only this form from the place where you download it on your computer and uh, make sure you have Adobe, the updated Adobe to open this PDF document. And after you fill in this form, make sure uh, you need to validate it and complete the saved versions of it. 
And uh, so this is the first page of uh, this application form. So uh, we'll mention some points uh, according to our experience that uh, students may feel confused how to fill in the specific items here. So on the first page, the top left, you will see UCI number. So you don't need to worry about it now because you don't have a UCI number before you submit your application. Um, and uh, so we uh, should go keep uh, an eye on the question seven, the current country or territory of residence. So you must put your current country uh, of residence or territory of residence in this form. Uh, and uh, so your status, if uh, you're a student, put a student here, if you're a citizen, then just choose the citizen here. And uh, accordingly, you need to put uh, the start date or uh, end date. But if you're a citizen, usually this will become gray and you don't need to worry about that. And then so for question eight, uh, if you have ever stayed in a country other than your country of citizenship or your current country of residence, you uh, have had like uh, more than six months uh, living experience there, you need to put this information here. Again, uh, you need to put in the status there. If you just uh, went to uh, for a visit, you, you can choose the visitor there. Uh, if you are a student, choose the student there accordingly. And again, put the start month uh, date and also the end date there. And this is the second page. So on the second page under languages part, there's a question uh, to ask you, have you taken a test from a designated testing agency? So this refers to the IELTS test. If you have ever taken IELTS uh, before, uh, you need to say yes. If you haven't, then just to say no here. And then uh, other than your passport, you can see national identity document. So uh, which means that other than your passport, if you have a second national identity, you need to put this information here. And usually it is from the country of your citizenship. Uh, and then for the contact information, uh, make sure you put the mailing address uh, accurate here. And also you should keep it consistent uh, with this information, which may also uh, be shown on other forms that you need to fill in. And this is next page of this form. So for this one, uh, details of intended study in Canada. So basically all the information under this part, you should be able to find it from your letter of acceptance, which is your admission letter from University of Alberta uh, that you have already got or you will get. Uh, and for question four under this part, uh, for the tuition one, this refers to the amount of one year's tuition. Okay, and then uh, the funds available for my stay, this one also refers to one year's available funds that you can have uh, for your study and uh, living in Canada. And uh, this one minimum, uh, uh, this, uh, the standard for this one, it should be your one year tuition fee plus 10,000 10, Canadian dollars for one person. Uh, but of course you should put the maximum that you can have here for one year uh, expenses. And um, if your uh, expenses, uh, the, the, the resource in Canada will be paid by your parents, then just choose parents here. When you click the small arrow button on the side, you will see the options there. And uh, if uh, any of them applies to you, just to click that one. If one of them applies to you or none of them applies to you, you can put other there and then put the details uh, under the other, uh, yeah, under the item of other here. And then uh, for your education one, uh, for this one, uh, you should put your latest diploma or degree program information here. Um, and under the employment, if you are currently working, then you should put your current uh, working experience here, start uh, year and a month. And if you recently graduated, then you just put uh, the start month that you graduated and then current activity you can put, you can say uh, recent graduate. And then the company is usually your last institution that you attended. 
And this is the next page. So for this one is the background information. So please read every sentence is really in detail and understand the meaning of it and also answer them accordingly according to your situation and uh, make sure not to make mistakes here. Um, and uh, so this is the last page of this form. For the signature, you don't need to sign on this form uh, if you apply online. Uh, and also for the date, you can just uh, put your, the current date that you uh, fill in this form. And after you fill in all of the information on this form, make sure you click the button validate at the end. And after you click validate button, you will see another page followed by this one. And uh, there are uh, barcodes on the last page. That is the final version of this document. And make sure you complete uh, and save the final version and upload it to your IRCC account. Okay, so now that we know how to fill in the uh, application form, you're going to start to think about your supporting documents that are also required for your application. Those documents include, as we already mentioned, the passport, letter of acceptance from the University of Alberta, proof of means of financial support, passport size digital photo, e-medical form if required uh, for the immigration medical exam, family information form, and very occasionally a police clearance form or police clearance documents may be required, but you would be contacted about that specifically if it was pertaining to you. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the proof of sufficient funds. Uh, so Xiaobing mentioned it when she was talking about the application form that you do need to indicate those amounts in the form. Uh, but the documents that you need to provide to support your application also need to indicate that you have funds uh, enough to cover you for at least one year of living expenses in Canada plus one year of tuition fees. So that is equivalent to the one year living expenses estimated at 10,000 for one person. And, at, and we also recommend having at least 2,000 additional to cover the travel portion of coming to Canada and as well, of course, all the funds needed to pay for your tuition for one year of tuition at the University of Alberta. That information, as Xiaobing mentioned, is on your admission letter. If you are coming to Canada with um, family or dependent family members, so if you're coming with a spouse or children, additional $4,000 is required uh, for spouse and $3,000 for each accompanying child. Uh, to be included in the proof of sufficient funds. So documents that you can include for your financial support documents uh, may include bank statements for the last four months. So include information about all of the accounts where the money uh, to support your, your studies in Canada is. A letter of undertaking from parent or sponsor in addition to their bank statements, employment documents, and proof of relationship, and official letter of scholarships and awards. So if you ha having um, a sponsor, such as a parent or a relative, help you uh, fund your tuition and living expenses in Canada, uh, you do need to have a letter stating that. And if they are a parent or other relative and you can show proof of relationship, to that person that can be helpful as well in, in providing with your documents. We also recommend to in include documents such as tuition payment receipts if you have paid tuition, uh, any investments and or stocks and bonds, documents around those, income from any rental properties you and your family may have, and if applicable, include documents confirming you have a spot in campus residence and you have paid the $500 residence deposit, you will receive a receipt for that. Uh, and uh, so besides the, uh, the basic uh, documents that uh, uh, IRCC require, and uh, you also should think, how can I uh, make my application stronger? So the first one uh, about financial ability, um, 
include as many documents as possible. As Caroline mentioned before, like say the documents from your parents or your sponsors, like their bank statements, uh, their employment letter. Uh, if you have any other documents uh, from your sponsors or parents, uh, we'll say include them all. For example, it could also include their property ownership, uh, certificates or documents for either their houses, any properties uh, like cars, uh, and also uh, any other uh, documents uh, financial can prove that this financial uh, strength, um, just include all of them. And uh, because you may have really a lot of different financial documents from your parents or sponsors, so uh, to include a cover letter for those financial documents will be really helpful. So please clearly uh, itemize all the documents and uh, we'll talk about this, uh, give you an example of this cover letter on next slide. And if your documents um, are not in English or French, make sure you provide the certified English or French uh, translation to those documents. And uh, if uh, you have already paid your university tuition fee upfront, please include the receipt with your application as well. And this is also highly recommended. And uh, here is the cover letter, uh, an example for, uh, of the cover letter for your financial documents. So uh, for, you can say, dear visa officer, please find enclosed supporting financial documents. And then uh, all the documents are attached in the following order. And this is the example, like you can say the parents' letter of support and the parents' bank statements, parents' employment letter, scholarship award letter, tuition fee payment receipt. So clearly itemize all of them and make all your financial documents really clear to the visa officer's uh, evaluation. Another way that you can make your application stronger is to include your study plan and make sure that your study plan is clear and concise. And you'll wanna upload that with your letter of explanation um, in the client information section of the optional document section of your application. What does a study plan look like? Well, you'll wanna include uh, details around why you wish to study in Canada and why particularly in the program that you've been admitted to. Think about what your overall educational goals are and include those in your letter. Indicate why you're not pursuing a similar program in your home country. And what research have you done into studies in your home country before decide, deciding to come to Canada? How does this program enhance your employment opportunities in your home country? Details of your education history, including um, any relevant transcripts if applicable, as well as what ties you have to your home country and include any supporting documents when possible. What we mean by ties to home country is things like proof of relationship to family members who are not accompanying you. So if your spouse and your children are staying in your home country, you'll wanna include information about those relationships, property or investments that you have in your name in your home country, if you're currently working in your home country and you've been given an authorized leave from your employer to pursue your education in Canada, you can include that letter as well. Any details of your education history that you'd like to include, just make sure to include the program name and the start and end dates of those programs or program, the name and address of the school or institution that you attended, and the degree or certificate that you achieved. The last thing we want to point out in terms of how you can make your application stronger is thinking through the application process itself. So we know there's a lot to include in your application, so it is important to carefully read the instruction guide that is available on the IRCC website and really take note of anything um, that you think you need to prepare for, uh, things like the cover letter and the study plan. Pay attention to the details when completing and preparing your application documents. Don't rush it. You want to make sure that you have enough time to complete everything and to review everything as well. Make sure all of your application forms are typed, not handwritten. And please validate the form before uploading or trying to upload. As Xiaobing mentioned, you don't need to sign the IMM 1294 if you're applying online, but do validate it. Um, and also 
if you make any changes to the form after you have already validated, please validate it again. Um, in fact, it might be a good idea to every time you open the form just to validate it again and save it. Um, so double check your applications and all supporting documents before submission. That's a really important part of uh, the application process as well. Like I mentioned, you don't want to rush it. Um, and check the processing times uh, for your where you're living for the study permit application so that you know um, how long it's going to take to process the application so you're giving yourself ample time to submit your application. And please apply as soon as you receive your admission letter from the University of Alberta. And again, you can contact uh, International Student Advisors, myself, Xiaobing, and our colleagues at advising at ualberta.ca for any questions that you might have about the process. So after you submit your uh, study permit application, what will happen? Uh, the first thing will happen is that you can expect to receive a biometrics introduction uh, instruction letter. So um, if you haven't done the biometrics in the past 10 years during uh, in the past 10 years uh, required by IRCC. And usually uh, you should receive this biometrics letter from your IRCC account within the 24 hours uh, of your study permit application. And uh, so please check your IRCC account regularly after you submit your application for any updates or any requests that might be uh, required by uh, IRCC for additional documents. And sometimes uh, uh, there might be some delay in the processing of the study permit application. Uh, so there are different kinds of reasons that can cause such a delay. It's sometimes it could be a medical or security screening. Uh, this may take longer than usual. Uh, and occasionally, sometimes some applicants may get asked for an interview, even though it does not happen very often. And uh, if sometimes you uh, get any follow-up requests or additional documents requests from uh, IRCC, but you don't respond quickly enough, that can also cause a delay. And also uh, there are sometimes high number of applications being processed, uh, then this also can cause a delay. And what happens after your study permit uh, has been approved? So first, congratulations if you get your study permit approved. And again, check your IRCC account because if uh, you approved, you will receive a letter of introduction. This letter of, in of introduction is the document that you must present to immigration border officer in order to receive your study permit when you enter into Canada. And also at the same time, you will receive a passport uh, request from your IRCC account if you are from a visa required country because uh, they will request your original passport and stamp uh, the visa on your passport first. And then uh, when you enter into Canada, you need to have both the letter of introduction and also your passport with the, with the valid visa. So when you enter into Canada, make sure you bring all the copies of the documents that you used in your study permit application, including the financial proof documents as well. So uh, thank you uh, for uh, listening to uh, today's webinar. If you have any questions, as Caroline mentioned, please feel free to email us uh, at advising at ualberta.ca. And sometimes there might be a high volume of these emails. And you may also want to check our website to see other ways that you can also connect with us for any of your questions for your study permit application. And good luck with your application. Thank you. Thank you, and we look forward to welcoming you to the University of Alberta.